three, and then the Nets still have enough time to maybe get the W. Richard, <sighs> Timote, Lawawu, Cabarro misses inside, and the Nets take a very tough loss in Washington, D.C. Wizards have won four games, two of them against Brooklyn. And look, let's not understate the whole Russell Westbrook, uh, Kevin Durant, just kind of competitiveness. So you know that Russell Westbrook is locked in. Tonight he had 41-10-8. You know, the, the, those are the old, old Russell Westbrook numbers. And he still has a ton of fire. But ultimately, the Nets are shooting the ball at an amazing rate. And you can talk about defense. You can talk about a lot of things. But ultimately, if you have 17 turnovers to seven, if you're shooting 54% and, the, and you're giving up 50 percent your scoring is going to be negated by you know your turnover issues and so they have to correct that but these were you know some amazing performances by the Brooklyn Nets Joe Harris uh, you know Jeff Green played outstanding tonight uh, there was just a lot uh, of positive things for the Nets but ultimately the turnovers and and the lack of defense late you know really hurt them and coming up it is the Los Angeles Clippers on the schedule. Everybody around the league is curious to see how the two teams will match up. Indicator is that the Harden injury is not very serious. The hope is that Harden will be a part of it. Did not play tonight. Left thigh contusion. The big three hoping for a reunion against a Clipper team that's playing at an extremely high level. That's on Tuesday night. Yeah, no, the Clippers are, you know, there. It, it's the Clippers, it's the Lakers, you know, the Utah Jazz are playing great right now. They they just lost to the Denver Nuggets. So, you know, that Western Conference is, is, is a monster. So for the Clippers to come over here and play against what you, you know, really believe is, is the class of the East. You know, I, I think you would put Brooklyn in, in the exact same category as the Milwaukee Bucks, the Boston Celtics, uh, you know, the Philadelphia 76ers, these teams that believe they have a shot to get to the NBA Finals. And, you know, Brooklyn has a lot of things that, that, you know they they can build on a lot of areas that they can improve on but this clipper team is going to be a very good litmus test because you know that this clipper team is going to play defense and so it's going to be a battle of you know who's going to be the first team to kind of relent whether it's you know the clippers trying to keep up with the scoring pace of the of the nets or are the nets going to have to you know try and buckle down and defend you know in a similar fashion that the clippers do and the defensive questions will continue to pop up until the Nets can answer them on a consistent basis. The Nets' winning streak ends at four. They had a golden opportunity to make it five in a row, but could not finish against the Wizards. Back to you, Bob and Frank. Hi, and Richard, thank you for that. Uh, meantime, they talk about the Clippers coming up next. Clippers beating the Knicks tonight. There in the fourth quarter yep. for Most the Wizards. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. 48 Most points, points in 12 yeah. minutes. My Lord. Most points allowed in that final quarter in the NBA this season. Beal with 22 in the fourth. The Nets also 17 turnovers in this game. Led to 25 points for the Wizards. Let's hear from head coach Steve Nash. Um, what were you seeing on the defensive side of the ball? I know the Wizards have, you know, two great store scores, but what were you seeing on the defensive side that allowed the Wizards to hang around and give them a chance to steal it? You know, that was basically the message after the game. Uh, gave up 149 points, 72 points in the paint, uh, 48 points in the fourth quarter. 17 turnovers didn't help, but, you know, the defense just wasn't good enough. And uh, I think everyone realizes, you know, we obviously had many opportunities to win it down the stretch at the end of the game there, but probably didn't deserve it the way we guarded all night. So um, frustrating night and, and uh, our level dropped and we got to pick it up. Was um, drawn up for that that uh, that last offensive possession. TLC had to miss, but was it just a good basketball play on his his cut? Was that the idea going in? What were you looking for? Yeah, we had uh, Kevin on the block there. Um, the play with, he had his he had his ISO or Kai coming off, and they flooded Kevin. So we knew that he had a cut, and somebody had the cut, Kai, and he got it and got a wide open one, and just wasn't able to finish. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Steve, when you look at that, I guess the the second to last sequence where um, the uh, Bradley Bill hits a three, inbound pass is stolen, Russell Westbrook hits a three. Where are you looking at as the the biggest breakdown in in that sequence? It's an unfortunate moment. Joe uh, just threw it in, and Kevin was cutting the wrong one, cutting a different direction. So it's just uh, an error, and it happens. Uh, but when you give up 149 points, you know, that's one error in about 50 defensive lapses. So 
you know, not good enough defensively. And we can look at the this layup or the turnover for the three there, but you, you, we shouldn't have been in that position. You know, we, we, uh, we had a big lead early. We let them stay around a long, long time until their confidence grew. They're a desperate team looking for a win, and uh, we gave them a chance and gave them life. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hi, Steve. Maybe not quite to this extent, but I mean, this has been a reoccurring issue where you guys have faced some teams with, quote, lesser records, uh, and you've had big leads and blown them. I mean, is this a case where you think, you know, people, they know where the standings are, they know where D.C. is, and they just kind of took their foot off the gas and thought that this was over? You know, it's, it's hard to argue with that perspective. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a little bit uh, intangible, but it definitely felt like, you know, we, we – you know, it, did, it didn't mean enough to get stops. Maybe we thought we had it in the bag, but, uh, you know, too many times we let them waltz right down the lane and get layups. And they're a good offensive team. I'll give them that. They spread the floor with shooters, and they have guys that can get to the rim. But, you know, our, our level dropped, and uh, we let too many guys get to the rim to the tune of 72 uh, points in the paint, and that is uh, one way to lose a game for sure. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Steve, talking about that 18-point lead early on, is there one thing in particular that you kind of thought led to them getting back in it and, and obviously the, the snowball coming from there, whether it was the turnovers or just the, the defensive collapses? Both turnovers. I thought we, had, we turned it over a bunch when we had the lead uh, or when we could have had a bigger lead even. Um, you know, just allowed them to hang around and give them some confidence. Um, they, you know, they scored a 149, and they, they missed a bunch of threes that, that they – are very capable of making so you know it could have been worse but uh you know I, I think we just let our foot off the gas thought we were going to win and uh, that's a dangerous game to play christian winfield with the new york daily news coach when when you i guess tomorrow when you go look at film is there going to be any one area that you're looking for defensively or is it you know just like where are you going to look tomorrow to kind of get things back on track you know the most important thing i think is individual pride you know, making every possession count and mean something. I think too many possessions didn't mean enough to us tonight. Um, we got to sit down in a stance and guard and make it difficult. And if we can cut out, you know, three or four of those paint attempts or baskets, you know, we win the game. But, I mean, you'd hope you can clean up a heck of a lot of them. And, uh, you know, I think more than anything, it's just a little bit of pride and a little bit of, um, you know, uh, desperation to guard the ball and keep them out of the paint. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Their season. That was it right there. They're up five points, 6.8 to go when Beal hits the three. Then Joe Harris throws the inbounds pass away, a steal. Russell Westbrook gives them the lead. Remember, the Nets had a timeout. A lot of times coaches in that situation, even though you have the lead, just call timeout there. This way you advance the ball to midcourt, settle things down, inbound the ball, and you can end the game that way. That is a disastrous loss. You yeah. cannot score that many points. And lose a game, especially to give up 48 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, a couple of things you brought up on the pregame. This Wizards team, they've had stops and starts. They're not a 3-12 and 12 team. They're more talented than that. They showed that. You also said that a few of the guys, including Westbrook, would probably play a little more inspired tonight. And they yeah. Did. Well, for, you know, Richard Jefferson was talking about it during the telecast that Beal is kind of easing himself into this game. Well, he eased himself in. <laughs> in the fourth quarter, he dominated. But Russell Westbrook, what you love about him, he's so darn competitive. He took a bad three right before that, which was not a good shot by him. But then off the steal, he had to take that shot. Knocks down the biggest shot of the game. And then at the other end, what does he want? He wants to defend Kevin Durant and give Kyrie Irving credit. That was a smart pass by Kyrie Irving. TLC, nine times out of ten, he's going to make that. I get it. You're under a little bit of pressure. That's a shot that you have to make. That was a good pass by Kyrie Irving on that inbounds pass with 2.9, I think it was, to go. Yeah. What a, that is a rough, rough loss for the Brooklyn Nets. All right, so Frank talked about a little bit of it. Let's dig into what happened down the stretch for the Nets in this one. Nets win the game if he converts that. Again, to your point, Russell Westbrook wanted Durant. And he made it tough. He was draped all over him. Had Kyrie uh, forced him to go to somebody else. And remember, the Nets did inbound from the side. Westbrook knocked the ball out of bounds. The Nets had two. Remember, 
when they took that lead, they had a they had two timeouts. So when Joe Harris initially inbounded the ball, they could have used one of those timeouts, advanced the ball to midcourt. They ended up using their two final timeouts in that last sequence, which should have ended with the TLC basket. All right, so Westbrook and Beals combining for 78 points tonight. Westbrook 41 on 16 of 28 shooting. He added 10 rebounds for the double-double, almost had the triple-double. And then Bradley Beal, 37 points. But, Frank, as you mentioned, six at the half, and then yeah. he just – blew the doors off in the second and, half. And 22 in the fourth quarter for him. That's the most points by Russell Westbrook since joining the Washington Wizards. And this is the thing about Westbrook. Same thing happened last year in Houston. It took him a while to get going. Maybe this will be the game that will snap, snap him out of it. But that is a, again, that is a rough, rough loss. To be up by, first of all, you had an 18-point lead in the first half. You're up five with 12 seconds to go. You give a back-to-back threes by Bradley Beal and then the big one to Russell Westbrook right there. That is the, they had a rough loss against uh, Washington yeah. at the beginning of the month. Yeah. This is worse. Now, I know Westbrook, Durant, Scotty Brooks, they, they, have, they all have a history together. But I wonder, so this means something to them. But what does it mean that the Wizards know they won this game and fought hard in this game again?